So much cat hair on my shirt. Why couldn't I have a blue cat instead of an orange cat? I'm gonna dye that cat's hair. Dye it up to blue. It'll match all my stuff. I'm gonna have to start wearing orange. Maybe that'll work. Wearing orange. I'm gonna have to make a video on cat hair gains. How to get gains with cat hair. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about intensity and what prevents most people from getting natural bodybuilding gains or getting gains in the gym. Now I did a video on the most anabolic thing a natural bodybuilder can do so make sure you check that out because I talk a lot about diet and how that is really the foundation of anything of course. I mean that has to be there because if you don't have the diet in place you're obviously not going to get the gains because your body it has nothing to rebuild the tissue with so that's so important. But assuming your diet is in place, assuming that your eating is in place, the really the major place that I see most people fail when it comes down to training is they're applying intensity in the training but they're not applying it in the right places. And what I mean by this is that a lot of times when they're training they're doing a range of motion where they are forced to lock out and to also rest or bounce off the joints on the bottom and the top of the movement. A lot of times these are the type of people who don't know a lot about training. They'll come on the channel and say, hey Jason, you're doing something wrong because you're not bouncing off the joints and you're not locking out of the top. Not understanding that I am choosing to do this on purpose because I am so in tune with my body that I know exactly where the tension is being distributed. And because of this, I make sure the tension is distributed on the muscles and making sure that it's not on the joints as much because the joints are always taking a beating. I always say this. Some people say, train the muscles, not the joints. What do you mean by that? Well, the joints are already taking a beating. You don't have to destroy a joint or break a joint in order for you to get more muscular gains. Now, the thing is, as a bodybuilder, you want to make sure that you are getting a lot of tension on the muscle bellies and if you're taking rests at the bottom of the movement and rests at the top, that is a lower amount of intensity. Like when I've touched my chest with the bar and I lock out of the top, there's a certain amount of intensity that is lost because I am resting. Say you go run a mile, but you take a rest every 100 meters and just walk for 10 feet, that is less intense, right? It's because of the resting that you're doing. And it's the same thing with training. A lot of times people when they first start, or even intermediates that have been programmed into this full range or nothing point of view when it comes down to the full range around the joint, not necessarily the full range around the muscle, they start doing movements where they are taking mini rests and then they're wondering why their body doesn't feel like it needs to adapt. What's usually happening is that the joint tissue is taking most of the beating and that's where your recovery is going, but your muscles are getting under recruited or under stimulated. So again, this range of motion is going to be different for each person, but you must do this experiment and understand where is this intensity being distributed. And if your muscle is not hitting failure, it's just your joints or your stabilizers are hitting failure all the time, but your main muscle bellies aren't hitting failure, you're not going to get the natural bodybuilding results that you're looking for. Mountain piss. Please master, tell me, how do I get a rock hard physique like you? Share your secrets with me, great one. Share your secrets. So this is one of the things that enabled me to become one of the top guys in the world in natural bodybuilding was because I was aware where the forces were being distributed and I was not afraid of thinking outside the box and training the way that my body felt was right where I was feeling the gains happening. Now, how do I know this? It's not because I just created this idea just because I was trying to be, uh, you know, some sort of wimp or something like that. Basically what happened was when I was doing full range movements and locking out and resting at the bottom, I was not necessarily getting that deep muscular burn. My sets would fatigue somehow, but it was almost like the failure or the fatigue would be happening in the joint and I wasn't necessarily getting the growth that I wanted from it. So I started watching some bodybuilders. I started watching some of the top bodybuilders and how they trained, some of the old school guys and everything. And I noticed that the constant tension was something that they subscribed to. And I noticed also that the muscles that I used constant tension in were actually growing the most. And so from this leap of logic, I started to apply this also to what felt right with other movements and I started to apply this constant tension there and then I started to get results. So this is not something that I just made up because I'm trying to compensate for being a wimp, all right? Because I know some of you guys are out there just, you're just a wimp, you can't do it my way, da, 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 da. yet I have no gains, you know what I mean? Like, come on, come on, man.
another reason why I also have certain ranges of motion now and stuff too is because my shoulders move a little differently now because of the dislocation shoulder and the, you know, these hockey injuries that I have and I talk about all the time, like an old guy, back in when I was a kid, I hurt myself. Anyway, so this is another reason why you may find that some of my ranges of motion are different than your own. But the point is, is that I am feeling where the forces are playing out and I'm applying intensity on the muscles, not overstimulating the joint because that's just going to do nothing except for destroy my joints and, and cause me to have to stop training right so what's the point of that so don't underestimate your own intuition when it comes down to where you feel the forces perhaps you feel the forces in a, in a greater range of motion than me or anybody else in the gym who knows right if you're feeling that in the muscle belly then trust that that's what you want to concentrate on and by applying intensity there you're going to be able to train more often which is another point I'm going to bring up and you're going to be able to train that muscle more often and then you're going to be able to stimulate it more. So as a natural bodybuilder, you have to stimulate the body and remind the body to grow more often than say an unnatural bodybuilder. An unnatural bodybuilder has all sorts of hormones and things circulating in their system to remind the body to grow. A natural bodybuilder does not. So a natural bodybuilder has to constantly tell the body to make hormones, tell the body to adapt, tell the body to grow. And the best way to do this is with a certain amount of frequency that's going to be optimal for you. Now I found a higher frequency program for natural seems to work best, which is probably why a lot of the old school bodybuilders trained each body part three times a week. Sometimes, yeah, they'd take three or four days off rest, but they would train three times a week. Sometimes it was two or three hour workout. Myself, I find that training five, six days a week, especially in my youth was the best. And I would just train a smaller amount of volume so that way I could train the body parts more frequently and therefore I maintained a better physique, a higher amount of a pump. And a lot of times people are looking at me and saying, hey, there's no way that you're natural. You're bigger than all the guys that I know that aren't natural. So it worked. That type of training worked because there was exponential gains that went with that. And that's why I sell the two-day split programs on my website. Now, it's not that I don't believe in three-day splits or four-day splits. Yeah, from time to time you want to just blast the body with high volume, especially if you're doing the strategic range of motion like I just talked about. But I find that higher frequency training helps you establish a groove, more coordination, as well as that constant stimulation that a natural bodybuilder needs in order to grow. Again, make sure your nutrition and your sleep is in place, but I find natural bodybuilders do seem to respond better to a higher frequency program. I hope this helps you out in your training. I hope it helps you understand that intensity matters, but where you apply it matters most. It's not just being intense for the sake of being intense because you could be wasting a lot of energy and actually destroying yourself in the process rather than getting efficient returns on your effort. So thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalglantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Mountain.